Hey guys and welcome back to Remove Before Race and we've got a super honour for all of us today as we're looking at the brand new generation of the new S-Class. Now when I say S-Class to you, all of us think immediately of Mercedes-Benz and to all of us I feel the S-Class is linked to the birth of Mercedes itself. It's not just the W116 that the S model name started with, but even the pontons of the 1950s and even going all the way back I feel to the original car that Bertha Benz drove. And today we are looking at the new 223 version of the S-Class, so let's dive straight in. So guys, here we go. 223 brand new S-Class. Today I can share some initial new information that I've got about this car, along with some of my feedback on a drive that we just took around here to show off some of the new technology of the car. Now, when we compare this to the previous model, which is the 222, you can see that there's not really much of a difference in terms of the size of the car. But as you can imagine, with a whole new generation, Mercedes have really gone to town on what most of us consider to be the best luxury car in the world. And it's quite a task to take something that was as epic as the 222 and make it an even better luxury vehicle. But that's the task that Mercedes engineers have had to enjoy with this new 223. So for example, let's look at some of the very basics of the car, like the body in white, for example. Compared to the 222, which had 30% use of aluminium, this new car has around 60%, 100% increase thus in the use of more rigid aluminium within this car. But of course, what that also means is, despite more tech being in the car that we'll get onto later, the car's weight is actually less than the previous model, which is of course a great achievement. Alongside that, things like the basic aerodynamics of the car. This has got a more aerodynamic profile. I haven't been told how much yet, but it is more aerodynamic than the previous model. We have, for example, a much more covered underbody as is becoming more standard across the automotive world. Again, helping with that aerodynamic profile. And that links directly to sound and sound insulation, which is so important. Indeed, in terms of sound and acoustics, a lot has been done in the detail of the car in order to reduce sound. So we've got for example, more foam within the body and white of the car. The piece that goes, that surrounds the windows on the side is a singular milled piece rather than being separate structures, eliminating any chance of any wind or any type of resistance that would create noise. And it's that kind of detail that Mercedes goes into with S-Class to make it that much better than the competition. Now, the design of the car, we can't talk a lot about it. Obviously, we've got a camouflage version here, but just looking around it, we can see that we've got a more upright and larger grille. We've got significantly different lights. I can see those three little light dots inside it. Again, we can't see a lot of the rear either. You can see the rear lights that have been teased in the past. But of course, these are just some basic details. What I'm gonna do now is go with you close up to the car. We'll have a walk around and see what is different in this brand new generation. You'll know also that this is the long wheelbase version. And I'll tell you a little bit about the differences between long and short in the previous generation and this one. All right, guys, here we go. Check this out, first of all. We've got a whole new key for the S-Class. Really beautiful looking. Completely unique at the moment to S-Class. And there is the new car. I'm going to do that again because the first thing that's really different about the exterior are the door handles. Anyone who's seen a Mercedes before, look at that. It's a completely different way of dealing with the same thing. This is also operated by the hand as well, as you can see. Very cool indeed. So this is your new 223 S-Class. Now visually the design, we can see some very clean lines. As I was mentioning earlier, we've got a much more upright face, a very intimidating looking grille, but classically S-Class, I think. You've undoubtedly got a new lower diffuser. You can see a bit of chrome popping out there. Paintwork is Magano on here, which looks glorious. Inside the lights, can we see the three light dots? I think we can just about, and the typical eyebrow of the car. This is, of course, the long wheelbase version, as I mentioned. Now, in terms of differences size-wise, in terms of the interior space, we actually get 20 millimeters more legroom and 40 millimeters more in the short wheelbase. 
can see those tail lights hiding behind there. What kind of design are there? Likely to be something like the new E-Class, as the family always tends to stay very similar in their look. Lower diffuser again, we can't really tell too much. But the general shape, even with the camouflage car, is simply that of S-Class, is it not? Which is exactly what you want. You do the old blink test, the squint test if you like, and you looked at this car in its shape, you would believe that it is simply an S-Class. And that's the only box that it really needs to tick. Now, as we spoke, the surrounds of the window here are a single piece, which allows absolutely no error in terms of any wind getting in and the sound insulation is something that they've really spent a lot of time in. That brings me kind of to the co-drive. So I sat in the back because being chauffeured around in an S-Class is what an S-Class is all about. And the first thing we did was test out what the rear wheel steering is like on this car. Now, it's very exaggerated. It's 10 degrees, up to 10 degrees. It is an optional extra, apparently, on the S-Class. And what it does is, if you think the GTR, which has it as well, only goes up to, I think, about two or three degrees. This is 10 degrees. So we took a hairpin turn, for example. If you don't know what a hairpin is, it goes like that and the car essentially swiveled on its spot almost and was able to take the turn without any issue whatsoever. And it was the most bizarre feeling as a passenger because you would never experience that on a car. I mean, look at the size of it. It is the size of your current long wheelbase S-Class. To my eyes, it looks a little bit bigger. And this thing was literally swiveling on the spot. You looked at the new MBUX sat-nav and you saw the car in the middle of the sat-nav and it kind of swiveled on its spot. It was absolutely incredible. We took some 90 degree angles as well. And again, the car almost swiveled on its spot. And talking to the driver, it's something that you get used to very quickly, even though it surprises you initially. And then the way that he was taking some corners, dynamically speaking, was pretty incredible. I never would have said that about S-Class in the past. But the interesting thing was, for a passenger, you really did not feel uncomfortable it just felt like the car was that much more dynamic. So think of that London taxi feeling where the three-point turn is, there's no such thing in US class. The three-point turn simply does not exist anymore. We also saw the car attempt some tight parking areas with a new parking assist feature and 3D camera. Again, you need multiple locks of a steering wheel normally, but the S-Class just did it in one. Of course, the S has always been linked to safety for S-Class and the S is taking crash safety to the next level with two big new additions. The first, using E-Active air suspension to raise the vehicle by eight centimeters at the point of side impact, thus helping the lower sturdy half of the car absorb the majority and the speed at which it happens is really crazy. You have to see it to believe it. It works so fast. The second is the world's first rear passenger front airbag. Again, speedy, but as cosseting as possible under deployment. Indeed, in terms of rear experience, it was all about just how quiet the car was. So when we came to a standstill in traffic, we had a couple of trucks next to us, and I could not hear anything from the outside. Couldn't hear the truck's engine, couldn't hear the road noise, and that was with the start-stop on, meaning the S-Class's engine was turned off. That's how good the sound insulation was. Secondly, the seats in the rear seemed that much more plusher, and I did confirm that they're using a completely different structure of seat with a lot more foam. So even the standard seats that I sat in here, this is not the executive car, were that much more comfortable. Indeed, the door cards in the rear seemed that much thinner, but I had a lot more elbow room inside compared to previous S-Class. And you may have seen on my blog on the way here that I did get driven up here in an S-Class. So very fresh in my mind what the previous one was like. The next bit was the new driver zone. Now this was fascinating. It had a 3D front driver display. Now, if you think of something like the old Nintendo 3DS where it kind of tracks your eye, this screen has about six cameras in it constantly tracking your eyes. And I had the opportunity of sitting in the driver's seat and looking at the new sport display, which is very similar to the AMG ones, where you have that tubular design of the driver zone, like the rev counter. And I was moving my head and I could almost, it felt like the tube was real and I was looking down a real tube. It was the most bizarre experience but so well done, so unlike what I've experienced in the only other place, I guess, was the 3DS Nintendo. It was done incredibly well, and then it's done in a way that when you're looking at the screen and then look back at the road, your eyes don't have to readjust, so that was very clever indeed. You had a load of different designs, including an exclusive one for the S-Class. This was in a beautiful white-themed UI. Of course, it changes the theme on both screens like all the others, and it really looked like the Maybach concept car ones. 
Now I've done a dedicated massive video on the new system that you find inside of the new S-Class. The link is down below, check it out because you'll get to see everything that's changed in the driver zone and in the brand new full screen on the side, stuff like security measures like biometric fingerprint, facial recognition, voice recognition. We've got a whole new updated MBUX that controls ambient lighting and all your other car functions. And of course, if you're sitting in the rear of an S-Class, now you get that much more control than you've ever had with the tablet and the other screens. I really recommend you check it out because there's so much to unpack. Again, the link is down below for that. And the other great thing was how the dashboard is set so much further back and allows you to see that much more of the road in front of you. Again, that's something, unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait for. Finally, the heads-up display was incredible. Whereas the largest one I've seen in the past was in GLE, and that was three by nine, the heads-up display in this car is 10 by 15, which is enormous. And again, you look at it, it's not like the heads-up displays that we are used to today, which are much closer to you in the way that they seem. It feels like it's set two meters further ahead of you, which makes it that much less intrusive and that much more in the background. So overall, as a driver, I think they've really upped the experience of this massively. The other really great thing, I could not find a single switch or trim that I've ever seen on any other Mercedes-Benz in the new S-Class. Everything was brand new, every single window switch, anything I can think of was wholly new in this car, which is great because you expect the S-Class to set precedent for every other Mercedes model in the future. And it's doing that certainly in terms of design in the interior. At least through the co-drive experience, you can get an idea of how enjoyable it was, A, to sit in this car, and B, what it must be like to drive it as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that first look at the 223 S-Class. It's been quite a drive that we had. I really enjoyed the new tech and how quiet it was and how luxurious it felt. There's loads more S-Class content coming this year when we finally see the fully uncovered model alongside everything that it has to offer on the road. So if you guys enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe, share this among your petrol head friends, and we'll see you again soon.